So you just started playing DBD and you don't know which character to main. No worries, I've asked the internet and compiled the info you need to be a successful Meg main. Whoa, hey, whoa, hey, whoa! You already have a Meg main video, my friend. What do you think you're doing, you may ask? Well, we need an update because some very important things occurred after the making of the Meg main video that caused a cosmic shift in the survivor reality. These things were the release of a few new survivors and, most importantly, the hatch changes. You see, back in the day, Meg mains would just just cleanse, stop, get in a locker, wait for the other survivors to die, and repeat to prevent crows. In the event that there were multiple megs, this would generally end in an hours long standoff where the other non-meg survivors would stand at the feet of the killer and beg for the sweet release of death, and the killer would eventually just DC because the meg mains had the art of waiting for hatch to spawn down to a science. Behavior changed the hatch mechanic so that it no longer spawns before we're down to a single survivor, resulting in natural selection running its course, and most of these players, one, quit the game out of frustration since they can't just camp hatch. 2. Quit the game due to the rise of the Zarina mains who see these megs cleansing and releasing to keep themselves from doing any actual work and sandbag them so hard that it knocks these 30 year old a-holes back into puberty. 3. Quit the game after the Michaelis popped into existence which really gave the megs a run for their money when all the totems either vanished or were booned. 4. Ada got added into the game and they are 100% fine with sacrificing Meg to save Leon and honestly, Ada just looked at Meg's face, got annoyed, and introduced Meg to what a two-killer system would look like in Dead by Daylight. 5. They decided to become Ada mains. Not the good ones that I found, but the ones people in the comments section keep finding. 6. They switched to killer and face camp because it's the closest thing to their survivor playstyle of waiting for other survivors to die while they sit on top of Hatch. 7. Keep playing Meg, but they get scared by literally anything and have been known to take cover when they hear a Leon moaning in the distance and have 100% big caught jumping in a locker because another survivor happened by and they thought they were the killer. These mains also tend to have an intense allergy to doing objectives and may spend the majority of the match low riding around and preparing to hatch hunt. 8. Know that they have no chance of ever surviving without the old hatch spawn so they just troll other players. So this left behind only the true Meg mains and something truly special occurred. The Meg mains began to change as if they started taking ally and the meg mains that were too weak to hang eventually just became an orange stain in the meg collective memory. Let's take a quick look at what the other megs have become. First off, one of the most beautiful things to occur was the rise of the meg and bill relationship. Bills have become a bit of a rarity but the moment a meg encounters a bill in the wild, a special bond forms between our good old grizzled grandpa and his new granddaughter. Megs will fight tooth and nail to save bill mains. Even a main that has the kind of gravitational pull that can drag a tap main off their general to give them a heal can't stop a meg main that is in the midst of a battle to save a bill. They will literally attempt to force the killer to hook them instead of tunneling a bill or to make sure that bill gets out during end game collapse. It will generally result in both of them dying because bill mains are too damn altruistic and can't stand to leave their baby granddaughter out there to suffer on her own. Bill mains are too good for this world. Next we have the slinger megs. Many players have seen the distinct hard on a death slinger gets when they zero in on a survivor being an absolute shitbird to other players and how they proceed to make their lives an absolute nightmare to the point that they either DC or deal with a face camp situation where none of the other survivors will save them or do objectives because they've all gather around to see that glorious yeehaw justice. So it is with the slinger megs but with a much harder focus on grinding down the megs mentioned in point number eight. They will absolutely put you into the ground if they catch you swatting another survivor that is definitely not interested or if they spot you sandbagging another survivor. You see there's a bit of a hive mind with meg mains and they can tap into the experiences of their predecessors. You know the ones who know exactly where another survivor is without ever running bond and can drop the killer off with perfect precision on the unsuspecting sandbagger? This is double for the bad megs out there. Slinger megs are systematically eliminating the megs who are out there giving them a bad name and no matter what the bad meg does, from sandbagging to attempting to farm the slinger meg to get them out of the game, slinger megs are significantly more ruthless and cunning than your standard bad meg main. Yeah, the slinger meg might go down, but she's taking you down with her and God save you if she ever finds you again in the fog. Next up, we have Nicolas Cage's worst nightmare, the B Megs. Some people who are Meg casuals may find themselves suddenly feeling like they're better at looping or feeling much more confident when they're going for saves. This is because of the siren song of Meg and the sheer power of the Meg hive mind. B Megs will generally mind their own business, working on generators and healing other survivors. But the moment a killer decides to go for them, this Meg will never leave them alone. Usually the killers make the mistake of chasing the B Meg for an extended period of time, which is absolutely catastrophic if you have gen jockeys like Jake, 
Ace and Detective Tap being left to their own devices. When the killer decides to leave the Meg, it's usually too late. The B-Meg has measured you and found you wanting, and now you are going to know what it feels like to be murdered by a person whose only means of harming you is striking you over and over again with a stuffed animal squeaky toy for the next 30 minutes of your existence. Finally, we have the Alpha Meg. You see, the story goes that the entity trapped the survivors in the realm of the fog and released a horde of demented killers to torment them until they shrivel up into tiny, lifeless husks. What the entity did not expect was a survivor who makes the killer feel fear. From the moment a killer loads into a lobby and sees that Meg staring back at them, flashy or toolbox in hand, they know. Alpha Megs simply don't wait for the killer to find them. No. They gather the other survivors, tell them to get to work, and go towards the terror radius, coming at them like a velociraptor bum-rushing a T-Rex. The killer will usually take the chase. I mean, it's a survivor in the open. It's a quick down, so why not? This is precisely what the Alpha Meg wants. Unlike a B-Meg, the Alpha is always the aggressor. Touching an objective is admitting defeat unless there is a flashbang involved. These Megs have evolved to the point that they 360 in their sleep. They could dodge a Huntress Hatchet at point-blank range. A Meg could tee off on Victor and clap his ass over 500 yards using a putter held together with duct tape. The Alpha Megs are the reason why trappers quit the game. They load in, set one trap, and five seconds later it's been disarmed and the Meg is just teabagging it. And the moment you try to hit back, they've activated Sprint Burst and are somehow flat lighting you through a crack in the wall. These Megs came in before the hag changes with a goddamn leaf blower, annihilating all her pretty little mud drawings. When clowns show up against an Alpha Meg with the redhead's pinky finger, she shows him her middle one. The Alpha Meg is the kind of survivor that a killer will dedicate the entire match to catching like Wile E. Coyote chasing the Roadrunner and still may never catch. In the event that the killer does catch her and camp her, the moment she's off that hook, they have to invest another 20 minutes trying to pin her down again while she just spam men's behind a pallet. The scariest thing about an Alpha Meg is that it is entirely possible for two to exist within the same match because game respects game. Meg, join the hive mind or else. Hi Grandpa Bill!